Okay, today I want to talk about a different notation for trigonometry. So the, cur uh, the current convention in trigonometry, we have a, a standard which is international, but it has a few flaws in it. So here on the board I've got um, sine to the minus one, by which we mean inverse sine, and we have a special term for that, we call it arc sine. And the reason we do that is so it doesn't get confused with one over sine of x, because that's what we usually mean when we take something to the power of minus one. But one over sine of x, it means something different to arc sine. It means, uh, it, well, it's the multiplicative inverse, and we have a special name for that as well. We call it cosec x. Now, when I initially look at cosec x, it's slightly confusing. You, you have to work out which one of the trig functions it maps with, because there are a whole set of them. One over sine of x is cosec x. It's just an arbitrary name. And completing the set, we've got one over cos x equals sec x. And similarly, 1 over tan x equals cot x. Now, um, we have a, a neat little trick in maths, which is if we look at the third letter of them, so s in cosec, c in sec, and t in cot, they match up with the first letter of the, um, the original three trig functions. So cosec, we have s, which goes with the sine x. That seems to be the trick that all mathematicians use when they're looking at these things. However, when you're looking at cosec x, you have to go through quite a, line, uh, a thought process to do it. So you see cosec x, you think, okay, what's the third letter? It's an S. Okay, so that maps with one over sine, and then you can connect it with all the patterns that you've got with sine in your head. It's too far removed. Richard Feynman came up with a better system for trigonometry. So I'm going to clear the board, and then I'm going to take you through that system, which is just slightly more intuitive. Okay, on the board we have the old system, sine x, and we have uh, Richard Feynman's system here. It's It looks initially a bit like a square root symbol. Um, this is a capital sigma, which has been extended over the top, and in exactly the same way as you can with square roots, in the same way that if I wanted to use the square root of quite a few things, so square root of phi over 2 pi, I can just extend the square root symbol down and around. It's a bit like we're bracketing. We can do the same thing with this. We've got this tail to it, which just surrounds everything which is in the sine x. So if we wanted to do sine of 2x plus um, 2 pi, then we could write it all inside this. We can just expand it, which is already quite neat. This is sine x. We also have similar things for cos x and for tan x. So they're based on the Greek letters. So for cos x, we have a long gamma, like that. And for tan x, it's based on tau, so tau is like a backwards j. It's like that. So if you cut them off along here, you get the um, Greek letter, and they're just extending. So because s is uh, is sigma in the Greek, we, we have that mapping back. So if you want to think in the old, in terms of the old trig functions, we have the first letter as the clue. If we want to do uh, one over these things, so if we wanted to do Normally we write 1 over sine as cosec x, because of our third letter rule, s. But on this one it's more intuitive because we literally we literally just flip it over. So we're going to get da, 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 da. Now when you look at this symbol, you don't have to do the verbal processing. In your mind you don't have to go, okay, so that's cosec, which is the third letter, which is sine. Instead you can see in instantly that that is the inverse of that. You, it, we just flipped the equation over. Similarly, we can flip this one and this one over, and it means that same thing. It's taking out one step of the thinking for you. You can just do it in geometric reasoning of the shapes on the page, rather than um, having to do these kind of verbal traps. Okay, similarly, if we wanted to define something like arc sine, so normally arc sine, we, we have these extra three letters, or you write it as sine to the minus one, well, arc sine x in this one is we flip it horizontally. So, da -da, like that. So again, when we're seeing this thing, you can, if you sit on the page, you know instantly that we've just flipped it that way. If you wanted to do both of those things, so if you wanted to write the inverse of cosec x, so r cosec x, sec x, then it's both flippings, one horizontally, one vertically. So it'd be like this. Now, this notation we can just extend in the same way as um, square roots. So if you wanted to, to find something like 
sine squared x, then we literally just put a squared on it. Let's try using it to solve an equation. So we've got something here written, let's not try converting it in our heads into the old system, let's just try manipulating the symbols. This thing here has been flipped over vertically, so that's the same as 1 over flipping it this way. Sorry. Equals 2 that thing there. Okay, cool. Um, but that thing there is on the bottom of an equation, so just like we're solving um, algebra, just normal algebra, we could times that up. So we've got 1 equals 2 of this thing squared. Notice I'm not bothering to say verbally in my head what this thing is, you're just manipulating symbols on the page, which is something that usually comes easier to people. Dividing by 2, I've got that there. Well, I've got something squared equals a half, so I can square root. So I've got root of 1 on the top, I've got root of 2 on the bottom. It's going to go to plus minus root 2 over 2 equals that thing without the squared on it. Now I want to do the inverse function of that, which is the same as flipping horizontally. And so we're going to get this thing here, plus minus root 2 over 2. Notice I can just kind of use this elastically. Like that equals x. And now you can think about it, what it is, and stick it into your calculator. So now you can think of it as cos, because plus minus root 2 and you can get your range of values. I haven't given a domain here, but you'll be able to solve it. Each of these steps is more intuitive when you're dealing with these symbols, rather than if we wanted to convert it back, this is sec x equals 2 cos x. With sec x, you have to do the third letter trick and think, oh, okay, that is 1 over cos. Then you'd have to think, okay, I got 1 over cos equals this, and you're now into a more algebraic thing. But again, this step, going from here to here, it's just in, you get used to manipulating symbols like this. Now Richard Feynman did uh, this system for about two years in his own work and he realised while it saves you time for yourself, you then lose the time back when you have to convert your paper for other people to be able to read it. Um, so overall it's a, a net loss of time. But it is intrinsically a better system if other people use it.